in this video we are talking about the life cycle and the development of the tinea solium now students in the previous lectures we had discussed about the fertilization process now how, how the fertilization occurs in the tinea solium so when we were discussing the structure of the mature hermaphrodite proglottid we had discussed about the physiology of the reproduction of the fertilization that how the egg capsules they are formed and finally we had studied that those egg capsules they are present they are stored in the uterus then we had discussed about one process which was called as apolysis the apolysis was the process of the breaking down of the old proglottids in groups from the body of the tinea so those broken off old proglottids which were containing thousands of egg capsules those were released by the man in the feces now due to the insanitary conditions of a lot of population the human beings they are spreading the gravid proglottids at different places so open defecation it is resulting into the expansion of the teniasis so open defecation it exposes those gravid proglottids into the environment and now we are discussing the life cycle of the tinea from those proglottids that how it occurs by ingesting those gravid proglottids which are open in the environment now in the feces of the man so the very first process is the cleavage so i'll be taking the cleavage very briefly so in the cleavage we have one egg capsule so that is present in the gravid proglottid those were stored in the uterus of the gravid proglottid so i am taking up a single egg capsule that how the development or the how the cleavage it occurs in the egg capsules now those egg capsules they are containing the zygote in the center and that zygote is surrounded by many yolk cells and the outermost layer is hardened to form the capsule so what is present inside the capsule is a zygote and many yolk cells now those yolk cells they congregate on one side they become concentrated and they form a synctial yolk mass and the zygote it divides into two cells and this division is not equal that is an unequal kind of a division so zygote it forms two cells one on the upper side which is a smaller in size and the lower cell is bigger in size the upper cell is called as the embryonic cell and the lower bigger cell is called as a megamere now out of these two cells the upper embryonic cell which is the smaller one it divides into many cells so now we have many micromeres and the megamere the lower megamere it divides and it form megameres so the embryonic cell is dividing to form the micromeres and the mesomeres but the megamere is forming only megameres so that's how we have the three types of cells now the micromeres on the top megameres in the center mesomeres they are on the lower side so we have the three types of cells now these three types of cells they give rise to the marula so this is a first aggregated form marula and marula is made up of micromeres this is a ball like structure and this marula is covered up by two layers of 
mesomeres and megameres. So in the very center we have the micromere marula. Over it we have a layer of mesomeres. Over it we have a layer of megameres. And on the very top <coughs> above all these membranes we have a yolky membrane. So this is the structure of one marula. After this what happens except marula all the three layers the first was of mesomere second layer was of megamere third was the yolky membrane these three membranes they join together to form a single membrane and that single membrane is called as embryophore so now we have a marula in the center and an embryophore membrane over it now this particular structure it gives rise to a particular larva which is called as the hexacanth now students the pig this is the main host of the tinea solium <clears throat> when this pig it will feed on the feces of the man it will take the gravid proglottids now inside the gravid proglottids watch what we had we had a branched uterus now inside the branched uterus we had many 30 to 40000 egg capsules now inside the capsules what we have now we have the larva hexacanth so you should be very clear that in each and every capsule this whole development from the zygote up to the formation of hexacanth has already occurred so when the pig is taking up those egg capsules or the gravid proglottids along with the feces the pig is ingesting these larvae the hexacanth larvae so when the pig takes the gravid proglottids they go to the stomach of the pig and we have we know that the stomach of the pig has got a large amount of hcl the acid so this acid will break down all the membranes of the gravid proglottid it will break the uterus it will release the egg capsules it will break the egg capsules and when it breaks the egg capsules what is present inside it is the hexacanth now these hexacanths are released inside the pig stomach or intestine so students if we take the account of a hexacanth larva this is just like this so this is the structure of one hexacanth larva which is released from the egg capsules into the intestine of the pig so why it is called as hexacanth so hexacanth hex refers to six so it has got six hooks so as you can well see in the diagram it has got six hooks and these hooks they help to anchor or to attach this larva to the intestine of the pig now the story has begun in the pig the man has released the gravid proglottids by apolysis now these gravid proglottids were out in the feces the pig has taken that feces while feeding and that gravid proglottids now have entered the pig those were broken down by the hcl and hexacanth has been released in the pig now now the life cycle we are talking about the pig's life cycle the part of the cycle in the pig now these hexacanths they they attach themselves to the intestine of the pig now what happens they bore into the intestine 
so these hexacans they bore into the intestine of the pig they go to the blood of the pig after going to the blood they release their hooks so the hooks were only and only meant for the attachment to the intestine now when they are in the blood they release their hooks and they are degenerated now it can go to any part of the pig it can go to the neck to the heart even to the brain even to the muscles even to the liver to the kidneys so it can infect the whole pig organs wherever it, it is going so ultimately it is reaching the striated muscles of the pig that is the home for the hexacanth so it can wander here and there in all the organs of the pig but ultimately it will reach the striated muscles and it will form the next form which is called as the bladder worm it is also called as cysticerus so this bladder worm it is present now in the muscles of the pig so this is the most important you can say stage in the life of the tinea solium if we go further this is again the hexacanth it traveling to the various organs and finally it goes to the muscles so we have already di discussed it so when it goes to the muscles it forms the bladder worm so here you can see the formation of the bladder worms so you can very well see this is a bladder worm these are all the bladder worms or the cysticerus larvae so these are present in the pig's meat or the muscles of the pig now this is the meat from where you can get the tinea inside you if you eat this kind of measly pork or spotted meat this is called as spotted meat or measly pork so you will get the tinea for sure if you are eating this kind of meat so this is the measly pork and this is a single or you can say two bladder worms so these are the cysticerus larvae or the bladder worms which are formed inside the muscles of the pig now this meat is eaten up by man so a person which is very hungry but it is having less of money it will buy the pork because pork is cheaper than the other meat or the poultry meat so it will cook the food very quickly because the man that particular man had no pressure cooker at their homes so he is just cooking that particular measly pork and it is eating very quickly so that particular pork the uncooked part of the pork will contain those bladder worms so when it is eaten by the man what happens you can see the very first stage of the cysticerus larvae this is that bladder worm and what it has that it has the proscolex which is towards the inside of that worm it is towards the inside so when that man is eating that particular bladder worm it is taking this form inside himself when it goes to the stomach of the man the outer membrane of this particular cysticerus larva will be broken down and what happens the proscolex it will come out inside the man so it will come out so when this proscolex it comes out now it is called as the scolex and 
this is the structure of the particular bladder worm. So, in the very first part, you can well see that the scolex is inside the bladder. So, this is called as the proscolex foam. And when the outer membrane is broken down, it comes out. And when it comes out in man, with the help of the hooks and the suckers, it attaches itself to the intestine of the man. So, here you can very well see this is a micrograph, this is a photograph of a bladder worm with its scolex out. This is the bladder and these are some of the segments which have already been made by the neck. This is the neck part. So, the hooks will attach this particular worm to the intestine of the man. The bladder, this part of the body, it will be thrown off, it will be cut off from the body of the scolex and some of the segments. So, this part of the bladder will be degraded inside the intestine of the man. So, what is left? It is only this part of the body. So, this part of the tinea, it hangs inside the intestine of the man. So, then the neck, the neck part, it starts its function, it starts multiplication and then after some time, this worm has reached a length of like 2 meters, then it is 3 meters, then ultimately it will reach a 5 meter length and when it has the mature proglottids developed, it will start the reproduction again. So, that man is now suffering from teniasis. So, this is the infection by the tinea. So, if you have tinea inside you, you have the disease teniasis. So, what are the symptoms? They can be weakness, it will eat about 30 to 40 percent of your food, it will take in. So, you will be weak, you will be having anemia, you are suffering from like digestive problems, you will have indigestion, you will be having low digestion of fats, you will be having some itching kind of problem inside your intestine. There may be some pain also. There may be some blood release also with the feces if the tinea is of larger lengths. And there is one condition which is known as cysticirrhosis. So, this is a very, very serious condition. And that condition occurs when you are taking the gravid proglottids inside you. And if you recall, I am just taking you to the level of the pig. What the pig has eaten? The pig had eaten your feces, your feces with the gravid proglottids. So, we know that gravid proglottids, they had the sixth hooked larvae, the hexacanths. Now, by chance, by chance, if the man after defecation, he is not washing its hands properly. Now, what will happen that he can take in the gravid proglottids of himself? So, the gravid proglottids which had to be taken by the pig is taken by the man itself. If it happens, the hexacans which are supposed to be released in the pig, they will be released in the man itself. Now, these hexacans, they are released in the man, they will bore into the intestine of the man, they will wander in whole of the organs of the man, they will finally reach the muscles of the man. 
and they will form their next form the bladder worm inside man so this particular formation of the bladder worms inside man rather than the pig is called as the cysticercosis this is a very very serious kind of condition this is even serious than tenesis so why we get tenesis if we are eating the pig's meat why we get cysticercosis if we eat the gravid proglottids which are released from our feces so that means these two diseases are very very serious and why we are getting these diseases because of our negligence because of our insanitary conditions so if we are taking proper care of our sanitary conditions if we have got good toilets and we are taking care of the cleanliness of those toilets we are away from these kind of diseases but wherever there is some negligence there may be some case of a child who is uh, taking in the gravid proglottids so these diseases these parasites they are only and only coming to you because of your negligence so what is the treatment if we talk about the treatment so we have got many anti helminth drugs like quinacrine we have so we have uh, a drug which is called as albendazole so we can take these anti helminth drugs but if the tinea has reached up to the length of the 5 meters so it is very very difficult to take out that tinea with the drugs so in the late years like few decades back the man used to take neem leaves or the extract of the neem leaves to get rid of these intestinal parasites but nowadays the neem leaves they are not working well because all these parasites they have developed the resistance towards that particular herb so nowadays for a fully formed tinea some doctors they may prescribe the operation to remove this particular uh, animal even if you have ascariasis if you have ascaris inside you ascaris may be many inside you as tinea is one or to the max they can be two in some times in some conditions so they are operated and they are taken out so surgery is the last part if tinea has developed to the entire of its length now what is the prophylaxis what is the prevention methods so students for tenesis the prophylaxis is that you cook the food properly first of all this is a very very important thing and uh, for and foremost you can avoid eating pigs meat or you can avoid non veg food i should say why to eat non veg food so most of the infections most of the parasitic infections you get from the chicken or eating the meat so first of all you should avoid eating non veg foods if if you are taking those foods and you should take care of the proper cooking of these kinds of foods these should be cooked properly next is the sterilization so whenever you are going for a defecation process then you should wash your hands properly this is very very important if you are going for open grounds for even walking running or racing or any kind of uh, playground activity you should come back to your home and you should wash your hands and feet properly this is very very important so if you know that there is open defecation in some place or you know that there is 
open deification going on in that particular place, avoid going to that particular place. So, if you are gone to this kind of place by chance, then you should wash your hands and feet properly. This is a prophylactic activity. And the final thing I should say is the maintenance of a proper hygiene. So, this is very, very important. So, proper hygiene is again important for all the bacterial, all the viral diseases. But here for parasitic diseases, you should be taking extra care of your hygiene. So, there is a root which is called as fecal oral root. So, the feces is going to your mouth again. So, this is a fecal oral root. So, most of the parasites, they travel through this root. And if you cut this root by taking proper care of your hygiene, you are safe then. So, students, that was all about the life cycle of the tinea, the disease teniasis, how it occurs. We had talked about the cysticercosis. This is a more serious condition. So, you may get question on teniasis, on cysticercosis, and uh, you may get a question on the treatment, on the prophylaxis or the prevention of this particular disease. You may get a question on that how you can prevent yourself from teniasis. You can have a question on the full life cycle of teniasis. So, you should be going by this topic from the book for further reference. Thank you very much.